G'day folks. Today I'm going bait fishing with worms to try and catch myself my very first ever silver perch. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now I've already got my fork shaped sticks in. I'm only using really small sticks. Because the water is very low, the um, wind is very high I mean. <laughs> Start that again. Because it's very windy, I want to keep my rods down very low. That's what I was trying to say. So I'm going to lay it nice and flat like that in the hope that the wind doesn't interfere with the rod tip too much and give me a false a false reading, give me a false positive. Check this out, because of the angle that I'm sitting on I've actually got my pick that I use for metal detecting and I've dug holes at the back of my chair and also for my bucket, that's my metal detecting pick. I've just scraped out a few little holes to make this chair fit nice and uh, nice, sit nice and flat. <laughs> now conditions are less than favourable today. It's very, very windy. We are in the middle of a deep, low pressure system. Conditions are actually very poor. That's it, time to pull the pin. It's been two hours, haven't had a touch. I've been blown away. I think my chances are slim. Thanks for watching. This one's definitely going into the monthly mashup video. <laughs> G'day folks, it's late in the afternoon. I've got about two hours of daylight left and I've decided to come to this dirty little creek here and just drown some worms and see if I can catch a fish. G'day everyone. My good friend Patrick Horn has told me that if I come up to this little dam up here in the pine plantation on a beautiful sunny day, that I will catch big redfin. I'm starting off with this little jiggle fishing lipless crankbait. I think it's got a little ripper. And it is a little ripper. They're about nine bucks a shot, not even expensive. Now, Paddy Horn tells me that there's some big redfin in here. Paddy Horn actually isn't my only friend named Paddy. I've got another friend named Paddy. He's an Irish fella. He sits on his front veranda all day every day. His name's Paddy O Furniture. Look at that. That's cast all the way across the dam just about. Now I have to catch at least one fish here today because I want to make a video so that I can use that Paddy O Furniture joke. That's too good a joke to go to waste. Right under the pines here. G'day mate. You're very well hidden in there. And if you hadn't have moved, I wouldn't have even known you were there. You know what, Rowan from RKJ Fishing, there's your porcupine. Rowan's never seen an echidna. He said he's never seen one in the wild. Isn't that amazing? I see him all the time. Can't see him now, he's very well him, very well camouflaged, isn't he? G'day folks, at the moment the yellow belly fishing is red hot at Lake Nilakuti. So today I've come over here to Lake Murumir to do a little bit of bait fishing. Now in case you're wondering why I've come to Lake Murumir while the fishing's so good at Lake Nilakuti, there's a few reasons. Murumir is about half the distance, but that's not really the main reason. The main reason is because I love it here. I've always believed that going fishing, the fish is just a bonus. Now I know I've got more chance of catching a couple of yellow belly over at Lake Nilakuti than what I have here at Lake Mutami, but I just love being at Lake Mutami. It's just such a lovely place. And I've got some uh, a couple of shrimp nets or yabby nets there. There's a lot of shrimp and yabbies in here, and I've got my rods. So I'm going to sit here and bait fish with worms. If I catch anything, it'll most likely be a carp, but there are a few yellow belly in here. I've caught one, so there is a chance of catching yellow belly, and I'm hoping to be able to catch a few shrimp and yabbies that we can uh, use for bait and take over to Nilakuti when we head back over there soon. Now, it might be a bit early in the year still for yabbies and shrimp, but you never know, so I'll put the nets in. Now, somebody asked me the other day, what's my favourite sort of dog food for these nets? I like the goodos because they, uh, 
they come out of the net easily. When you're finished and you want to empty your net, you can just tip it upside down and they'll fall out. The home brand stuff gets really cluggy and sticks together like a handful of mud. Right. -o. Net number one, you can go just out there. That'll do. Net number two, I'll just put in here, right next to where I'm fishing. God, it's not flipping around. What's in them all? Got some nicer ones in there now, too. Just look at the little minnows. I'm trying to work out what sort of minnows they are. Yep, heaps of shrimp. No yabbies. No sign of any yabbies yet, but uh, no shortage of shrimp. These nets are dynamite for catching shrimp. What I'll do when I go home with these shrimp, I'll uh, take them home in a bucket of water and then I'll freeze them. Live shrimp. I bet oh, there's one right on top here, look. <laughs> Is he still... Ah, oh, he got off. <laughs> Live shrimp are better bait. Doesn't seem to be a lot more in there than what there was last time. Still, you know, a dozen or so shrimp in there. Live shrimp are a much better bait than frozen shrimp, of course. But they're very hard to keep alive. I've got an aerator, but I don't know when I'm going to use them next. So if I use some frozen shrimp, next time I go to Lake Nilakuti, frozen shrimp will still catch yellow belly. Holly and I have just spotted a massive black snake. You can't have a look? Will it bite me? No. Would it kill me if it did? No. Would I have to go to hospital? Yes. Here he goes, he's spotted us, Holly. He's, oh, he's taken off, look. He's going in the water. Look at him going in the water. He went under the water. Is he going to pop out and come by me? He's over there. We just don't know. We've just got to be careful here because we don't know which direction he went. There he is down there. <laughs> he's a very big snake. I think he's going over the other side. He knows we're here. Oh, we're scared of us. Look, there he is. He's over there. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit. There he is. He's going to come out over there under that tree. He's going over grass. Yeah, he's just... Do you reckon he's scared of us or do you reckon he's hunting? I don't know. I think he's doing both. I think he was sunbaking. I think he was. I can catch that snake. <laughs> no, you can't. I came over here to see why all the soil was disturbed, to see whether there'd been any feral animals or anything in here. And that's where I found him. You wait here. I'm going to go for a walk over there and see if I can no, see him. No, don't get bitten. I'm not going to get bitten. Would you have to go to hospital if you did? Oh yeah. All right, I'll be back. You wait right here, okay? Would it hurt? Yes. Let's swim out to that little island. Black snakes love water. And that's why we find them around waterways so often. They love frogs. Frogs are their favourite food. That's actually a very big black snake, that one. He's just about to dip his head under the water. There he goes. Oh, I just got a real good look at his big red belly. I reckon he's looking for frogs. I can see his head just come out on the other side of those reeds. 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 He's right out in the middle. He's on the hunt for a feed of frogs. See his back. There he 
he's, he's seen me. He's seen me and he's done the Harold Holt. Literally, he's disappeared into the water. He's come out up there. She doesn't even notice I'm filming her. <laughs> yeah, she has. <laughs> Should we leave him alone now? Okay. Say bye bye, Snake. G'day folks, this afternoon I've come fishing in this nice quiet little backwater on the lower reaches of the Broken Creek. 